Hello there compadre and welcome back. It is now week three of the plant ancient event in DML which does bring us the caterpillar solo event and the brand new sigil leaderboard along with the new sigil map. So it is new reset as well so we'll be doing all of that but I do want to take a look at this new sigil map first. We do also get to see the brand new sunspot dragon as part of this event which is pretty cool and of course, because we finished the last map, we have gone back to number 471 for this time. So that's cool. But the reward of the month in the new Sigil map is Epic Sunspot, who is a pretty looking boy, who is an epic um, earth, light, and metal dragon. I forgot the word for earth then. But obviously, when you finish the map, you do get this dragon. I do also recommend that we buy the Sigil Doubler, but it looks like it's counting down to four minutes which is sort of freaking me out so maybe I will do that in a second but the other big thing of course is the new sigil contest event so how does the event work there is a little info bit in here so you need to score as many points as you can in the sigil campaigns battles each battle you fight contributes to your total score even battles where you already have three stars so the higher the fights number the bigger the score multiplier you'll receive for winning a battle. You'll earn a bigger bonus score the faster you complete the Sigil campaign. So this is why a lot of people have been saying that they believe that this is just incredibly pay to win because if you just gem through the map obviously you'll finish it quicker. But the rewards for this are Sigil chests. The top reward being five premium Sigil chests but it does say finish today and get 5 million bonus points. So, yeah, that seems like a lot of points for anyone that decides to gem through the whole map. I think if you were to gem the whole sigil map, I think it comes to about 1,700 gems total, roughly. So, is it really worth spending 1,700 gems just to get 5 premium sigil chests? I, I don't know about that. But position 2 to 3 also gets 3 premium sigil chests, and then anything below that, you just get a basic sigil chest. So, not very great. And leaderboard is locked until you finish the campaign. You'll see other player scores once you have won the last battle of the event. So you don't actually get to see anyone else's scores until you finish. Which um, is another way of basically making you feel like you're just going to have to gem through the whole thing immediately. So I'm not a fan of that at all. But what I am a fan of, of course, is continuing on with the sigil map, getting the final bonus reward. But... Again, I'm going to wait two minutes before I do the rest of or my first four fights because this reward doubler, I don't know why it's ticking down. I'm going to wait and I'm going to buy it at the end. I don't want to buy this little reward doubler and then it end up not counting or I'll have to buy it again. So anyway, that is the new sigil campaign map stuff. Along with that, of course, like I said, oh, oh it actually appears as an event on here. Um, it's got an underscore, probably shouldn't have that. Anyway. We'd also have Cocoon Quest, which is the solo event for this time around. And in this solo event, we do get season points and we also get Leaf Stones. The tier 8 reward being 3,200, which I thought we were getting more than that at tier 8. But anyway, it is just a regular old solo event. We've got three quests, do the quests, and at tier 7, you can get yourself Caterpillar. And I actually did not get Caterpillar last time, so... I want to finish tier 7 now. So collect gold, feed dragons, and breed hybrids. We can do this with, along with our reset timers, which is the best way to do this. Um, because obviously you'll be breeding things like war dragons and things like that to help out with dragon boards. So we can at least do this breeding elemental hybrids, although usually it's better to do fire plus wind. But, you know, if you want to do two birds, one stone, then you can do that for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hatch one of these boys and then we can get our hatching points as well. So if you can try and do both the solo event along with your resets, that is going to be the best way for you to do it. Although, again, with the breeding quests, if they ask for multiple breeds in a row, that's obviously going to become more difficult and you might need a second breeding den for that. But that is cocoon quest for this part done. You can also obviously speed up using gems, but I recommend not speeding up unless you are seriously desperate in these solo events. So, 
you know, you do you. Um, I'm actually just going to skip this for now. That's a waste of a breeding skip, but I don't care. I'm just going to go and get our duplicate so that I can get our other questy stuff done for now. Um, uh, Billy, you can join the clan. Have fun, matey. So, since we don't have any clan quests or anything to do at the moment either, I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of my dragon board reset stuff. Other thing that I have not mentioned yet is, of course, Bottomless Dungeon. And in this Bottomless Dungeon, this is a big week for a lot of people because you can get the legendary Autumn Dragon in the chest. It's probably not going to be a high chance, but if you're doing your dungeon resets, getting KOs, opening up chests, you never know. The Autumn could appear in the, the smallest red chest, or you might have to open up the final purple chest 15 times. But, you know, as long as you give it your best shot, at least you can get dungeon currency and maybe... A free extra legendary even if you don't need the dragon you can always ascend it I suppose if it's a duplicate so that's not too bad and usually if you really want to go for a dragon and go for the purple chests I normally recommend skipping the blue chests after about this point and just going straight for the purple but depends on how dedicated you are in the dungeon and how good your team is for this dungeon week it does seem like this is another kind of Ick, dungeon week because it's got a lot of energy dragons which of course is not good for me because my team relies on buffing an awful lot but you know I guess it could be worse so far I've gotten some currency which I'm happy with and we can get some more dungeon stuff and then I will check out the shop in a second which also has a premium sigil chest in it I believe so whenever I see premium sigil chests in the dungeon I do always buy them Mainly because free to play, there aren't really any other really great options. Not that I'm fully free to play, of course, but for chests that don't cost a load of money and that you don't have to skip through the entire Sigil campaign for on day one, obviously there are not many ways to get premium Sigil chests. So I buy them whenever I see them, pretty much, as long as I can easily afford them. But anyway, let's open this chest here we got some more dungeon currency I think we can make it to this just before this red chest here so we're not too far away from purple chest now but going into this dungeon shop we've got perfume we've got one day of VIP I actually don't really need that but we've got apocalypse pieces for anyone that wants them we've got a premium sigil chest which yes like I said I'm gonna buy this one and no rare no rare of course of course every time no rare Feels bad, man. And aside from that, not really anything else of value. But there is a habitat limit extender. They can be useful to newer players. Not at my point, but, you know, keep grinding this dungeon, getting your fight bonus up, doing good stuff in between all of the other events and such that are going on. So, you know, that is the general gist of what is going on this week. And for the solo events... If you ever do need to collect gold, you can actually just collect it without the gold symbol being above the habitats. That's the difference between castle events and solos, in case you didn't know, in terms of how you can collect gold. Little bit of tidbit of information there. So, if we then head back on over to this sigil map, you'll see that now the cooldown has gone on the reward doubler. So, it's 100 gems. Buying additional Sigil Reward Doublers extends its duration. Okay, I guess it wouldn't have taken it off of me if I've done it before then, but that's okay. This means that we do get two times the rewards for 30 days, so I'm going to buy this. It does mean that we get two times of the final dragon and any chest that we open on the way there. And any fight that we do, we do get double the rewards. So going into this fight here, these are the dragons that we're facing. They've got one Legendary Sigil. And one of them, Mr. Rat, has a green. So that's kind of scary. Um, I guess we'll swap our team around back to the dungeon team that we've been using. Mainly because this format's been doing okay for me so far in normal fights. But obviously, the, uh, the sigil map is quite different from base map fights. But, you see, I've done this fight here, and in the bottom left it says Sigil Contest Score 64,399, and it did a little calculation there. And if we click that, it says Sigil Contest, you'll get rewards at the end of the Sigil campaign. Lovely. But it does tell us after every fight 
what we are getting in terms of points, I suppose. So, you know, even though this sigil contest stuff might seem really pay to win to me, I can't see how it isn't. 62,000 times one, there we go, we're at 126,000 now. But, you know, if it's just one of those things where everything else in the game doesn't change, but it just means that people can spend extra on this for a lot of cost, well, I mean, you do you. It would be interesting to see at the end of this, though, how, how many points and what position people get just by doing the map naturally and getting three stars in every fight. Because especially now, in this sigil map, we are at the point where lots of people are going to start running into walls because going against legendary plus sigils is obviously going to get difficult if you don't have the right team comp. So the only people that are really going to be finishing off these maps are going to be, you know, wonder acceptance team comps. And so not only do you have to gem through the whole thing to get the best score, you'd also have to have a really solid team to do it. So, you know, even though my initial um, predictions for this are not too positive, I'm not gonna just go, oh, I hate it, this is trash, this is garbage. I'm gonna see how it plays out. I'm gonna see how they decide to fully implement all of it and see what sort of scores people get at the end. So that is all of that. Of course, like I said, we've still got the dragon board to do. And in the dragon board, we do, of course, have new bingo rewards coming this week. One that I'm actually interested in getting myself because it's for the Jade Dragon. And the Jade Dragon is actually part of the best breeding combination for the Bludgeon Dragon this month. Not Bludgeon. For <laughs> not for Bludgeon. Bludgeon's a different combo. No, for the Bounty Hunter this month. Not that there's much more time to be breeding Bounty Hunter, and breeding him during the event is a bad idea. But for anyone that's super desperate, they might be able to swap over to the better breeding combo. If, they're, if that ends up working out for them. But anyway, let's go and do our bonus quest, which is collect three epic keys in the dragon board. So coming into this bingo today, you'll see that we get 200 leaf stones, 10 tickets for a full house, and we also get pieces for Jady Wady. I've already got eight pieces of Jade, but obviously eight out of 22 means that I'm going to have to do quite a few of these bingos. So this does mean that I'm actually going to have to focus on hitting these green tiles this time around and doing the bingo. And like I've said many, many times, with the bingos, if you haven't saved up currency, you're probably going to have a little bit of a tough time. Ooh, times 10, lovely. And the reason for that is that sometimes the bingos might cost 13,000 event currency. And there's not a lot that you can really do to avoid that sometimes because of the dice rolls. Because even though you have the power in this Dragon Ball event to, you know, sort of manipulate what sort of results you get, it's not always going to happen. So, for some people, they might end up finishing this bingo in 9,000. Some people might end up finishing it in, like, 15,000. But the key is that... While you are going for the bingo, you still do want to be focusing on getting the purple tiles if you want Pune win. And of course, I want Pune win, so that's sort of what has to happen here. But it can suck in a situation like this where I want to hit these purples and I have to hit two purples and the white tile if I want to get the rewards, which means I need a three and then another two. So... Sometimes I tend to skip this part right at the end because of that reason. But now we need two twos, which is probably going to take a lot of re-rolling. Which is why, again, for this little section here, sometimes I do just end up skipping it. But since I'm talking about it, I'm just going to do it this time. Skip, let's keep going until we get another two. Hopefully it doesn't take too much longer. And um, that's another one. I could also just go onto this purple tile and then re-roll for a 200 and then do 50s, but, you know, it works out in the end. You see, we end up spending a decent amount on re-rolls doing that. So, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. Depends on your re-roll luck, but you can make informed decisions about the best ways to do it. Just bear it in mind that while you're doing all of that, 
if you want to go for Jade, like I do, we should also be going for those bingo numbers. So, if I could get a 1 here and then hit on that 6 tile, that would be great. Um, I don't know, sometimes there's also this where it's like, hmm, I could get a purple key there and then just hit that and then go for a 6 on the other green tile, which is also a possibility. Hmm, I might just go for the 1 now. Again, if you really, really, really want Ox and you don't want to have to gem for him at all, then the best thing for you to do is not re-roll ever. But that also does hinder your chance of getting Pumwin massively. Because if you're not re-rolling, you're not going to be hitting those purple tiles. So, this is the reason why right at the beginning of this event I said, you need to decide what you want before you get there. Before you even start doing anything, decide. Do you want to go for Pumwin? Do you want only um, Yolhan? Because if you try and do both, and without having to gem for Yolhan, it's probably not going to go very well for you. Just being honest, it probably will not be very good. Um, so I guess we'll go for the three on this one and then go for a six on this green tile at the bottom. Although I'm not going to spend all of my event currency because I do still need to save it for seventh quests, but I imagine by the end of getting Jade, we're probably going to be running quite low on event currency. So then, after that point, we will um, we'll start stacking again for a little while. So again, if we want to hit a six on this green to get double purples, we need to count back six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to hit a two and a six. Um, that's a 1 and a 4, not quite what we're looking for. A 2 and a 6 is what we need. There's our 2, and then we just need to get the 6. There we go. And then that's how we would do this one. So then after this, I'd try and avoid hitting a 6 on the green tiles, because, you know, we've already got a green on, the, or a 6 on the green tiles for the bingo. So now we want to hit the green tiles with the rest of the numbers that we haven't reached on them. And that's the general strap of how you can get through these while still getting pieces of Pune-Win and, you know, still getting your quests and everything done. But, obviously, if you want all the things, you are going to suffer in all regards. You're gonna be a few chapters behind, perhaps, blah 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 blah, all that sort of thing. So, again, if we hit a 1 on here again, we can hit a 6, which you know, it doesn't really matter so much for the purple tiles if we hit the, the same number because there's lots of purple tiles compared to green tiles on the map. So I don't mind hitting a 6 the second time around on purples, but you'll see we're now at 264 pieces for Pumwin and at 142 purple chests open. So we are just about, we're just about on track to get Pumwin by the end of the event because we've got two weeks left of this event and uh, still a little bit of time to go still a little bit of time and again since we don't want to be hitting a six on this green now I will probably re-roll for a one there we go game was nice gave me a one straight away so now on the green we need a four five or a two so if we keep that in mind let's go one two three four if we hit that blue tile and then get a five then we will land on that green, get another bingo. So, you know, I have been through all of this sort of thing before. Oh, and we've got actual chapter 13 to do. But, you know, some people forget. Some people might not have been here for the initial explanation of how I do it. And other people do it. But, anyway. The ancients don't like us because they're afraid humans will ruin their jungle. I guess I can't blame them, considering what the tyrants did. A few hundred years before this, they almost poisoned the entire world. I saw it with my own eyes, thanks to Kronos. Are ya? Are ya? Sorry, Ned. This skull helm dragon is so friendly. It really wants to play, and I am not about to refuse. I am a friend to the humans of Foros. Many of us wish to wish for the unity of humans and dragons, you know. Do you think you could tell your friend to spread the word? I will. But first, may I battle you and your companion? Sure, Skull Helm, we'll beat you up all you want. You want us to beat you up? We'll beat you up. We'll beat you up silly, my boy. So there is chapter number 13 done. We get six more tickets for that. Lovely. 
So we still need to get to chapter 21. Will we get there by the end? Probably not without jamming, but that is the choice that I have made. Um, no, six is not what we want. Um, a four? We, we do also need a four on there, so we can do that as well. One and a four. Now we'll hit that one, hit the purple, and uh, we Gucci. So we just need to do that a few more times, two more, or one more full rotation on the map, and then we will be getting our pieces of jade along with our leaf stones and tickets. So again, we can do this throughout the day because we're going to have three more resets between now and the next day's bingo. So I'm not going to get it all at once. But we've made good, good progress, I shall say. But then again, we come back to this, collect some more gold. And, you know, sometimes with the solo event, if there's super long timers on like this quest, sometimes it's just more time efficient to skip it for four gems. Um, maybe I will just do it for the sake of it, just to show anyone how it works that's never seen a solo event. So if you do really want to skip just a, a quest because it's going to take like half an hour for no reason, and it costs like three gems, you can skip it, then you get the leaf stone, then you move on to tier two. So then this is hatch two dragons, collect food, and level up dragons. I did just put all of my remaining food in, which is why I also have Kronos time skip to help me out. But we've also got a hatching dragons quest here, which we can do quite easily. And the... I keep quick clicking on the wrong events, damn it! But we've also got level up dragons, so then we go over to here, level up. So there's a lot of things that you have to keep your your mind focused on, because we're going to have this, we're going to have a clan event going on, we've got the sigil map that you've got to remember at least to log in once a day, daily quests, everything like that. But mainly trying to manage dragon board quests with solo event quests is your main priority, because again, with the collecting food, and things like that, it can get a little bit complicated. But if you do have ruin skips, or well, either you can use Kronos, or what you can do is you can skip using any farming relics that you might have. So I'm just going to use these here as a good example. But you can do that, and then you can pop in more food straight away. And maybe it might be a good idea for in some of your farms to just pop in hour long food. I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, so then you could say have half of the farms with hour long food, the other half with six hour food. So your overall food production might be halted quite a bit this week, but that is a good idea if you want to make sure that you're getting your solo event done. So, you know, all things to keep in mind. It's probably a better idea to actually farm shorter timed food than an hour. But I'm just giving you an example of what you can do going into the later tiers, getting yourself Mr. Caterpillar, and getting those bonus leaf stones that you can use on the dragon board. So, I'll keep checking this sigil map until I start seeing people's names and scores on this leaderboard, because as soon as we start seeing names on here, that means that they finished the campaign. So, the sooner we see that, it means that they would have gemmed through. So I would be curious to see what their final score would be. Which, you know, 1700 plus gems just to just to skip through to the end, that's a lot of gems. If someone really wanted to do it for some reason, you know, power to them. And um, the main reason I wouldn't want to do it is because you can get ancients and divines for a lot less than that. So it's kind of like, what would you rather have? Five extra chests, or would you rather just have uh, an ancient? You know? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it is just me, but um, in terms of value for, for what you're actually investing, I don't know, for five premium sigil chests, like, don't get me wrong, eventually whoever just gems the most and spends the most will just end up with lots like much higher tier sigils than everyone else because you know the more premium sigil chests you open on average the further ahead you're going to be compared to everyone else it's just is it really worth getting a legendary sigil as like the first person in the world but you had to spend like 50,000 gems to make it happen mm. i don't know to some maybe a little pointless imo 
However, I know that some people just like to spend their money. And if they have lots and lots and lots of spare money, I guess they are free to do whatever the heck they want to do with it. It's just, if I had, like, I'm talking like billions of dollars, <laughs> millions and billions of dollars, if I had millions and billions of dollars, I'd just, I'd just not spend it. <laughs> I'd probably just save it for something that I did want, like a big house. Would I even want a big house? I don't know. Probably not. It's like, what do I actually gain from having a big house? Hmm. Not a lot. Plus, you'd, you'd need security if it was too big, because then people would be like, Oh, look, it's that big house. I bet it's got lots of stuff in it. No, I'd probably just buy a normal house. Just a convenient house, maybe with some bonus cool tech in it. I don't know, like some... Maybe have an inbuilt home gym. And then... What would I do with the rest of the money? I don't know. I don't know. Not a lot. I don't have big plans. <laughs> I don't have huge plans. I don't care. I, I genuinely don't care too much for money. So, not a thing for me. Um, I'm just trying to say that I wouldn't spend it on DML either if I had all of that money. Anywho, that is a uh, uh, other clan quest done. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of micromanaging. Going here, there, everywhere to every different part of the game. Doing this little thing, doing that little thing. Don't forget your daily quests. I always forget to do these. Please don't forget. Aside from that, um, we may see some more bundles this week for new dragons, different dragons. Uh, speaking of which, we do have one for Mr. Caterpillar. But it's like either you just do the solo event or you spend £12.50 on him. £12.50 is a lot for a, a, a random epic and a caterpillar at that. Imagine going outside and just to pick up the caterpillar you had to spend £12.50. That's the equivalent of this to me, IMO. Anyway, that is this week's update on the newest events. I do wish you the best of luck with all of your chest openings if you're going to be doing some more of them. And if you do decide to jam through the Sigil campaign, let me know and uh, tell me what the sort of crazy scores you're going to end up getting. Because whoever gems it on day one is, of course, um, going to win. <laughs> Anywho. For now, I do hope that you get everything that you want, and I will be continuing on with our event grind. Until next time, I do hope I can see you then.